story of Chico San Cassiano and public opera. It all started way back in 1565. This is the year that the original building of Chico San Cassiano was built out of wood by Andrea Palladio. At this time, it was only used for private performances to be viewed by the very wealthy upper class. In 1629, the original building caught fire and had to be demolished. It was then rebuilt as a stone building by the Tron family. This stone structure was still used for only private theater. While we have no actual pictures or paintings of San Cassiano, we do have an idea of how it was set up based on other theaters from the time. It probably had a large stage up front with a small area for the orchestra in front of it. Then there were probably many rows of boxes along the sides and back of the theater, and an area for seating on the floor level. Now let's move on to the late 1630s. Opera had become very popular in Italy at this time. A very important opera in this story is Sante Ermiona. It came to Venice in 1636. Most of the performers were from Rome, but some were singers from St. Mark's. They decided they wanted to capitalize on the success of the opera. So they decided to experiment a little. In 1637, Benedetto Ferrari led them in producing on Dromeda, with music composed by Francesco Minelli and librettist Ferrari. The very special thing about this opera was that it was the first ever that was open to the public. And where did they perform this opera? Why, of course, it was the one in the one and only Tito San Cassiano. This event is what makes San Cassiano so special. It was the first step in a new direction for opera that turned into a huge success. Now, average people could enjoy opera too. It was no longer for the elite, high, wealthy upper class. Opera was for everyone. In 1638, the same group produced La Magna Fulminata by the same writers. Then, in 1639, the second public opera house was opened, Chicho di S.S. Giovanni e Paolo. By the 1640s, other public opera houses opened as well, including Chicho Esmoy and Chicho Novissimo. In 1639, Ferrari and his crew left San Cassiano to work at Giovanni e Paolo. San Cassiano was then taken over by Francesco Coletti Bruni and Francesco Cavalli, who wrote most of the operas that were performed there over the next six years, while business was booming. And boy, was it booming. The one step of playing an opera open to the public by this time had turned into a very popular business and also changed in shape opera in Venice. The fact that Venice had free religion made it the perfect place for public opera to grow. They held a carnival there every year from Christmas to Lent that brought many visitors that would pay to watch the opera. Many wealthy families could rent their own box for the whole season, and others could rent a seat on the floor for just one performance. And everyone, whether they had a box or a seat, had to also purchase an admission ticket. Although many people were eager to see the public opera, it was difficult at first to make money. Most operas were elaborate shows of wealth before this. To make a profit, a few things had to change. They cut out a lot of choruses and dances, and they also went to three acts instead of five. Impresarios were hired by the theater owners to handle everything, including finances. This would put pressure on them to make money so they didn't lose their job. One major effect of the rise of public opera in Venice is that it inspired Monteverdi to come out of operatic retirement and write three more operas. El Retorno di Ulisse in 1640, Le Nase di Inea e Lavinia in 1641, and Le Encoronación de Papea in 1643. Also, Cavalli wrote 28 operas in Venice during this time. Another change that occurred because of public opera 
was that there were now famous stars, or divas. The diva was the lead soprano with the best voice. People would come to the opera to see them, and some operas were written to show off a particular singer's talent. One of the most famous divas of this time was Anna Renzi. She was one of the brightest young stars of the time and had operas written just for her. Although she probably never sang in Pietro San Cassiano, because the other theaters were becoming more popular. In fact, after the first few years, not as many operas were performed in San Cassiano as the newer opera houses. By 1650, operas were only sparingly ever performed there anymore. However, it will always remain one of the most important, because it was the first, the spectacular venue that started it all.